Is this thing recording? Yeah, clickbait, I know, right? <laughs> I wanna start by saying I have huge respect for a certain know-it-all in FPV. We are good friends. He has taught me so much over the years and I am extremely grateful. I literally watch all of his videos, even the live streams. They play on my TV while I'm working almost every day. Because we are good friends, I wouldn't want this video to cause any drama for either of us. So please try to use this video to see a different perspective about antenna usage and not as a big spoon to stir the pot. If you're new to this channel, or if you just stumbled onto this video by accident, welcome. I'm Let's Fly RC, a professional drone pilot, and I fly fast, agile, FPV freestyle drones that are capable of amazing things. These drones have a video signal that travels from the drone to goggles that I wear on my head, and this allows me to see what the drone sees, and it allows me to fly virtually from the cockpit. This video signal travels from a transmitter on the drone to a receiver in the goggles, and they have specially designed antennas to maximize range and penetration through objects along the way. Two specific types of antennas are omnidirectional, which excel in maximizing coverage in all directions around a point of origin, and directional antennas, which excel at maximizing range and penetration in a specific direction. We will distinguish these antennas throughout the video as omnis, which are omnidirectional antennas, and patches, or crosshairs, which are two different types of directional antennas. Crosshairs, by the way, are different than patches and they're sometimes mislabeled as patches. Crosshairs are superior to patches in range and penetration, but patches are smaller in size and sometimes used for that reason. I prefer the crosshair antenna and will spend most of the time in this video explaining why. My favorite antenna is a TrueRC X-Air crosshair antenna. X-Air stands for crosshair, by the way. I'm not sponsored by TrueRC and did not receive any payment for making this video, but I do want to disclose that I was given a few X-Airs free of charge and I purchased some myself as well. Now I'm not gonna to pretend to be an antenna expert because most of the knowledge that I've gained over the years was from listening to other antenna experts. So you might be asking yourself, why should you trust me over another expert in the field of FPV drones who might claim to know it all? To give you a bit of my background, I've had many years of testing and experimenting with different types of antenna designs. I hosted drone races for the largest multi-GP chapter in the world, five years in a row, managing and optimizing radio frequencies for those events. I have traveled to locations with the absolute worst radio frequency environments. Environments like Detroit, which have some of the most epic and largest concrete and metal buildings in the world. Environments like Funspot Orlando, which is one giant metal and concrete twisty turn. I've chased monster trucks, roller coasters, full-scale airplanes, dirt bikes, street bikes, drift cars, RC cars, other drones, and even rockets. I've flown through mountains and even recently was hired to film an event through the tall buildings and parking garages of downtown Orlando. And I want to share my real life experience with you because sometimes real life experience differs from physics on paper and testing things in your backyard. And it's possible that we are not 100% aware of the physics surrounding us in our specific situations. Specifically, I'm referring to flying FPV with goggles on our head. Physics may lead you to believe that flying with all crosshair antennas and no omni antennas on your goggles will be less desirable in most situations. While there may be some situations in which that is true, I want to show you why I believe that flying with quality crosshair antennas on all four antenna ports of your goggles is the right way to go in almost every situation. Some may argue that directional antennas perform very well in front of you, but very poorly beside and behind you while flying. I argue that running stubby omni antennas on your goggles gives you virtually zero improvement. And you should take advantage of the extra range and penetration that four crosshair antennas can provide in front of you. Of course, that all goes out the window if your head is pointing down while you fly. Generally speaking, as FPV pilots, we can't be bothered with using long-masted omni antennas that reach up high, and we typically use stubby antennas. These stubby antennas do not poke up high over our fat, water-filled heads. And because of that, they do not fare much better, if any, than directional antennas as far as rear coverage goes. They rely on reflection, bouncing off objects to receive the transmitted signal, reducing efficiency, and performing like directional antennas. Essentially, the omni antennas become directional antennas. These words were inspired by my friend Hugo of TrueRC Canada, a much smarter antenna expert than myself. And generally, when an FPV pilot picks a location to fly, they don't usually show up to a spot, turn around backwards, and fly behind themselves. For the most part, we fly in front of ourselves with the possibility that we might go beside or behind ourselves 
for a short distance over some point in the flight. But just in case you are that exception and you want to fly 360 degrees around yourself, I wanted to show you that it is totally possible and quite easily with quality directional antennas. So I flew a local spot to show you how useful quad crosshair antennas can perform beside and behind yourself and how they provide extremely impressive range and penetration when compared to stubby omnidirectional antennas, which are designed to excel in that area. This is just one experience out of thousands of mine that have shown the same results. Another such experience was when I visited Detroit and visited one of the largest abandoned buildings I had ever seen called Castle. And I was able to fly from the second floor in the center of the structure behind myself through concrete walls and floors and metal everywhere. And I was nearly able to reach the entire building forwards and behind myself. Detroit was an amazing place to fly as an FPV freestyle pilot and I can't wait to go back. So this is my daily goggle setup. This shell houses four TrueRC crosshair antennas, which are internally connected to the Waxnell receiver, bypassing the RPSMA connectors and hooked straight to the internal UFL connectors. This eliminates the extra dB loss created by the RPSMA connector and feeds the antenna signal directly to the onboard UFL. I have been working with Hugo at TrueRC on this project for months. I will have more videos to come regarding this faceplate and I hope to have it available for sale soon so that more pilots can take advantage of its awesomeness. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna open these goggles up on camera, so you'll just have to trust me that there's not some magic voodoo going on inside. Okay, enough of the talking head. Let's get to the flying video so I can show you one real life experience I created to test my daily antenna setup. Okay, here's the flight video. First, I'm just gonna take off and kind of fly around myself to kind of give you the idea of which direction I'll be facing for this whole flight. I didn't have time to set up multiple camera angles, so you'll just have to trust me that I maintained this position for the whole flight and I didn't rotate to point the antennas in a different direction. All right, let's start off by just flying out through these trees. Trees are very hard to penetrate through because they're filled with water and water seriously degrades the FPV video signal when flying on 5.8 gigahertz which is what the system runs on. So I'm just kind of doing a little flippy floppy over here. And I'm going to now fly up high over top of these trees to show you the area that I'm flying. So I'm gonna fly up in the air. I am gonna show you where I'm at. I am right in this little area right here with my truck. Uh, let me hover around. This is the park that I'm flying at. And I just wanna kind of give you an idea of the size of the area I'm flying. This is where I'm at and I'm gonna now fly around this area. I'm gonna attempt to go beside and behind myself to show you that I have amazing range and penetration in this area. Even though I'm going through my fat head with all the water inside, my truck, which is a big metal object behind me, and if you look over the right, there's two buildings right there, two concrete buildings that I just flew through and penetrated through by going beside myself. So I'm gonna go back in front of myself again. Here I come right in front of me again. I'm gonna go off to the other side just to see what the range and penetration is like over here. And then I'm gonna go and fly again behind myself on the other side over here. So we're gonna now, I am now on my rear right and I'm flying behind myself. No problem, no issues at all. And this is DVR footage, by the way. So you're seeing exactly what I see in the goggles. Actually, there's three buildings. I was incorrect earlier when I said there was two. All right, there you go. Let's count the buildings. We got one, two, three buildings. Okay, those are all three concrete buildings. And there's a shrub bush over here. And I'm gonna fly up behind all three buildings and my metal truck and my big fat head. And I'm gonna continue to fly with no issues. As you can see, I had a tiny bit of pixelation there, but I was totally flying with confidence with the Waxnell system, with crosshair antennas, and no omnidirectional antennas. There we are again, there's my truck, and you can see how it was blocking my view, and so were the buildings, and that big tree, and another tree, and another tree. All this stuff I'm able to penetrate through with no problem. But let's take it a bit further. Let's go even farther away. We're gonna just kinda go down this street. Let's see how far I can go down this street without losing signal. And I'm not gonna push it all the way to where I actually drop out of the sky. Matter of fact, I turn around here just to make sure that everything's good. Right about here is where I can start to see some pixelation and a little bit of laggy behavior so that I know it's about time to turn around and come back. I probably could have flown just a little bit further, but I didn't wanna to have to go and pick up my drone because I'm quite far away from my truck right now. So just so you can see, I've got a ton of obstacles between me and my drone flying behind myself 
and I'm doing it with no problem. So why wouldn't you want to take advantage of the extra range and penetration that you can gain by flying directional antennas in front of yourself when there's no reason not to? When you can totally fly comfortably beside and behind yourself with no problems. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching, and I hope I've helped you see the value in flying with quality antennas on your goggles. And I hope I inspired you to experiment and try new things, even if the physics tell you it can't be done. See you next time.